Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, we are going to solve uh, problems in Chapter 5 about the laws of motion. Uh, so as you, as you have met, um, recognized probably in the course, we have mentioned a lot of new concepts and uh, new ideas in this chapter. Um, the new concepts are mainly with the forces, uh, contact force, tension, uh, gravitational force, friction force as well. Um, and also for the ideas, there are plenty of new ideas in the Newton's uh, laws of motion. So we are going to um, reiterate on these concepts and these ideas in the problems. So solutions. وكمان في اشياء حكينا عنها يمكن خلال الكورس بس مش بشكل مفصل حتبين معنا بشكل اوضح بال بالبروبلمز سو اي وود ادفايس يو تو سولف از ماتش از بوسيبل فروم ذيس تشابتر اون اون وود سو اي وود ستارت باي ذيس فيرست بروبلم اي وود بي شيرينج ماي سكرين اند ذن اي وود شير ذا وايت بورد Um, so we have, so this is, this is, this given is uh, in the textbook on the page 129 uh, and it's called the Atwood machine. When two objects of unequal mass are hung vertically over a frictionless pulley of negligible mass, as shown in this figure, the arrangement is called an Atwood machine. The device is sometimes used in the laboratory to measure the free fall acceleration. Determine the magnitude of the acceleration of the two objects and the tension in the lightweight cord. Um, so let's actually, um, you know, just read what is important in this in this given. So first of all, this says that the two objects of unequal mass. So M1 is different than M2, but we don't know what are these masses. So if M1 is bigger or uh, smaller than M2, uh, and they are hung vertically over a frictionless pulley. Of mass m, so the pulley we are talking about is first of all frictionless, and it's also massless. Of negligible mass, it means that it is massless. Uh, and also, they say that so we have determined the magnitude of the acceleration of the two objects. So basically, a1 and a2, and the tension in the lightweight cord. So this is also something to highlight. Lightweight cord. It means that the cord is of negligible mass. And therefore, it's also in extent. Um, so let's go uh, on and uh, share the whiteboard to solve this problem together. Okay, let's start. So uh, meanwhile, I will be reading again this uh, this um, the uh, example. So this example is the example number. So it's example 5.9. And let me draw the, the figure. So we have basically, this is the output machine. This is the uh, pulley. This pulley is fixed to uh, some sailing. And then we have out of this pulley from one side, so that you have here the cord, and you have on one side a ball of mass M1 attached to it. And on the other side, we have a block of mass M2 that is attached to it. So we have two masses and M1 and M2. Uh, M1, of course, is different than M2. Uh, we have to determine A, the acceleration of the two objects. So A1 and A2, basically, let's call them this way. And we have also to determine the tension in the cord T. Uh, so what do we have to say uh, in, in this problem? First of all, we said that the uh, cord is uh, inextensible. Uh, so actually, that means that if and if, if M1, for example, it, if um, M1 is displaced by some delta y, so it moves the distance um, or displacement delta y along the y either the y axis or the vertical, M2 will move in the same uh, the same distance, the same length of this displacement delta y, which means that actually both objects they move with the same um this displacement and therefore they must have the same acceleration okay for the simple reason that this uh, cord is inextensible uh that's number one number two it's about the pulley so this pulley uh as we have uh, read in the given uh, it says that the pulley is uh, frictionless and massless 
The consequence of this uh, characteristics of the pulley is that the tension in the, in the string from both sides of the pulley, so the tension in this point here on the first side of the string on the other side of the string is the same. It has the same magnitude and of course, uh, in this case, the same direction. So we can say that tension is the chord is the same on both sides of the pulley because it is massless and it is frictionless. So let's write these uh, things down. Uh, first of all, number one, I would say, since the chord that is connecting uh, the, that is connecting the two uh, objects, connecting the two objects is inextensible. Therefore, um, we can say that the M1 and M2 must have the same uh, magnitude of the acceleration. of the acceleration and be careful here we of course only have the same magnitude and of course not the same direction because uh, we are going to discuss this later on but let's just put it quickly so if let's suppose that m1 is move okay we don't know how the system will, will move so we are going to suppose that if m2 is moving downward then m1 will move upward right so if a2 is this vector uh, in blue if M2 move, moves downward, that means that the uh, A2 is pointing downward, then M1 will move upward and A1 is uh, pointing upward. So as you could see, acceleration vectors A1 and A2, they are not the same, they are not equal in, in, uh, in as vectors. A1 is equal to A2 in magnitude, which is let's call it equal to a so they have the same magnitude of the acceleration so we can write down that the magnitude of the acceleration a1 is equal to the magnitude of the acceleration a2 that is equal to a okay so that's number one number two also we want to say that the pulley is frictionless since the pulley is on one side massless and on the other side, it is frictionless. So that means that the tension in the cord on both sides of the pulley is the same. Okay, and that means that we can that, that means that the tension force that is acting on both objects on the other side is also the same. Uh, so let's actually solve it uh, now. Uh, this the first step is to determine what we are going to study. So the system that we are going to study is M1 and M2. Uh, since we want to get the value of T here, we are requested to get the value of T. So we are going to consider M1 separately and M2 separately. Uh, so that's step number one. Now, step number two. So step number one, we are going to consider M1 and M2. M1 and M2 independently or let's say separately. Uh, step number two, we are going to um, draw the uh, free body diagram. Free body diagram for both. both M1 and M2. And then we are going to apply Newton's second law. So let's take first the uh, free body diagram for M1. So M1 is attached to the cord on this side of the pulley. So I'll just draw it like this. Here's the ball. So this is M1. And here is the, you know, somehow we have here the pulley. So what are the forces acting on this uh, M1? So first of all, we have the weight, which is the force acting uh, on the uh, mass M1 by the Earth. And on the other side, we have the tension in the cord that we are going to call T, okay? So if you apply Newton's second law, so Newton's second law on M1, what do we get? 
Uh, so let's take also, we have to consider first, uh, before to start the direction, a given positive direction of the uh, Y axis, because this uh, M1 is moving vertically. So let's take y, y to be positive upward. And so Newton's second law, it tells us that the sum of Fy is equal to M1 A1Y. So along the Y axis, we have plus T minus M1 G is equal to M1 A1, uh, because actually the acceleration of this object is all along the um, it's all along the y-axis and the object is moving. So let, let me draw A in, in this. Uh, so M1, this M1, we said that it is moving up. So A1 in the same direction as Y. And so we end up with this uh, equation. Uh, and since we add, we actually said that A1 is equal to A, so we can write down T is equal to, or T minus M1, G is equal to M1 times A. Okay, that is equation number one, which we get by applying the Newton second law on the uh, mass M1. Now let's consider the mass M2. So for the mass M2, it's on the other side of the pulley. So if you just draw it in the same uh, way here, M2 is present in, in this uh, side. Uh, what are the forces acting on M2? So again, we have the same way, the weight, and we have the tension in the cord, that is T. And don't forget that in this case, the block M2 is moving downward. So this is the vector M2. And of course, we, we, we take the same uh, direction for the y-axis. Uh, so let's uh, work out. So Newton's second law now on, so Newton's second law on M2, it gives the following. Uh, plus T, again, minus M2G is equal to minus M2A2Y. Don't forget that. Um, don't forget that in this case, uh, a two is um, pointing downward, while the positive axis is upward. So there is a minus sign, and actually, uh, a a two y is just a two, and a two is a. Okay, so we can write down t minus m two g is equal to m two a, and this is equation number two. Equation number two. So now all what we need to do is to combine these two equations to get the unknown. So we have two equations with two unknown, which is T will A. So we need to see a way to get out of the answer. If we do one minus two, we, we get the following. So T minus M1G minus, um, minus T minus M2G is equal to M1A minus, uh, there is a minus sign here. So minus, minus M2A, minus, minus M2A. Let's make some simplification. So T minus T, they're gone. And then here we end up with, so uh, M2 minus M1 G, is equal to M1 plus M2 A. And so we can finally deduce that the acceleration is given by M1 plus uh, M1, uh, M2 minus M1 divided by M1 plus M2 A. So A is equal to M2 minus M1 divided by M1 plus M2 all multiplied by G. So that is the acceleration we are looking for. And uh, from here, we can conclude what is the value of the T. So T could be deduced actually from equation number one or from equation number two. Let's use equation number two since we can see it on the screen. So T is equal to M2 G minus A. So it's equal to M2 times G minus M2 minus M1 divided by M1 plus M2 times G. So all what we have to do is to get G out and to make the same denominator. So we end up with M2G multiplied by M1 plus M2 minus M2 plus M1 divided by M1 plus M2. And so here we can uh, eliminate M2. Finally, we end up with 2M1. So we end up with 2M1 
M2 G divided by M1 plus M2. And so this is the tension in the cord that we are looking for. T is equal to 2 M1 times M2 divided by M1 plus M2 multiplied by G. So actually we can take some particular cases. Uh, let's discuss two cases um, I would be interested in. So particular cases, Okay, the first particular case is what happens if M1 is equal to M2? So if M1 is equal to M2, actually what happens is that the system uh, will be balanced at some point. So both M1 and M2 will be balancing each other and the system should stop. So it should not accelerate. Um, how can we see this mathematically? Uh, look what happens. If we put M1 equals to M2, then A would be equal to uh, so A is equal to M2 minus M1 divided by M1 plus M2. So it would be equal to zero divided by two M1 times G. But of course, zero times anything is just uh, zero. Uh, so uh, that's what happens M1 is equal to M2. While in the second case, if M1 is very large compared to M2, so let's suppose that you have uh, one uh, mass that is greater than the other, but it's really, uh, big, very big compared to the other, then what happens is that in this case, uh, we can ignore the effect of the smaller mass. And so the larger mass should uh, simply fall, you know, uh, because look what would happen in this case. If M1 is very big compared to M2, we end up with A equals, so the A is equal to M2 minus M1 divided by M1 plus M2 multiplied by G, right? So if M1 is very big compared to M2, then uh, this M2 could be simply, uh, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very small. So this is approximately would be equal to minus M1 G divided by here. Also M2 would be neglected in front of M1. And so we end up with M1. And so then therefore, if you just cancel out M1 and M1, you end up with A approximately equals to minus G. And as you can see, when A is equal to minus G, that means that the object is simply in free fall. So the mass M1 would simply uh, fall down and there is no impact of the smaller mass. It does not play any role. Um, so that's it for this example. Let's move to another example now. Uh, let's read the given and... Uh, Okay, so in this new example, uh, the the you know the main uh, the main thing is that we are looking for the acceleration of two blocks that are connected by a cord. So suppose we have a mass, a ball of mass m one, a given mass, uh, and another block of mass m two that are attached, but by a lightweight cord, which means a very very uh, light cord. Uh, of, of negligible mass that passes over a frictionless pulley of negligible mass as well, as shown in this figure here. So the block lies on a frictionless incline of an angle theta. So this inclined plane makes an angle theta with the horizontal. We have to find the magnitude of the acceleration of the two objects and the tension in the cord. So this is a little bit similar to the previous example, except that here we have an inclined plane and one of these blocks is in contact with this inclined plane. Why in the previous example, the, um, the two blocks were not in contact with anything. They were just in contact with the cord uh, that, uh, that uh, connect them. Uh, so let's do it. Let's move on. So the new example is example 5.10. I'll draw the figure. So we have here this inclined plane making an angle theta with the horizontal. Um, here we have the pulley and from one side is connected the, the ball of mass M1 to the pulley and on the other side we have the block M2. Um, so again, just as we said before, so we need to determine 
the acceleration of the two blocks and we need to determine the tension in the cord. Okay, we have to determine A1 and A2 as well as the tension T. Okay, so um, I will not put a lot of details here as we did in the previous uh, problem. I will just say a few words. So first of all, uh, just like before, the cord is inextensible. So the uh, two objects will move the same displacement if one of them is moving, and therefore both objects will have uh, the same acceleration uh, in magnitude. So the same uh, magnitude of the acceleration, which means that we have A1 equals to extensible cord implies that the magnitude of A1 is equal to the magnitude of A2 equals A. Okay, that's number one. And number two, just like before, since the uh, pulley here is of negligible mass and frictionless, that means that the tension on one side of the pulley and on the other side of the pulley, they are equal. They are the same, these forces. And therefore, consequently, the tension acting on this ball here and the tension acting on the uh, M2 on the other side, they are also equal and the same. Okay, just to be... Uh, let me draw it back. So we have here the pulley and here we have the block M M1. So uh, since the tension here on the two sides of the pulley is the same for the simple reason that the pulley is uh, massless and frictionless, then that means that this tension two on the block two is the same as the tension here on the block uh, one. So T1 is equal to um, T2 in magnitude. Uh, okay, that's all. Let's go on. So what we are going to do is first draw the free body diagram for M1 and M2 and then apply the Newton's uh, laws. So let's start with the uh, free body diagram for for the mass M1. Okay, for M1 actually it's very compared to, it's, it's very much uh, similar to previous examples. So this is the M1. Okay, on one side we have, so we have on one side the um, weight M1G, which is uh, the force exerted by the earth on this object. And we have on the other side the tension T. Okay, and let's actually take a choice for, for the motion of this object. So let's suppose that the system M2 is moving downward with a given acceleration A2, and consequently uh, M1 will be moving upward. Okay, so this is the acceleration A1. Of course, A1 and A2, they are equal in magnitude, but they are not uh, the same in direction. So this M1 will be moving upward like this. This is A1. Uh, and still we have to, uh, choose a system of reference for us. So let's take the y-axis to be pointing upwards. And all what we have to do is to apply the Newton's second law. So Newton's second law on M1, okay? We can write down sum of F forces on projected on the y-axis is equal to M1 A1 Y. Uh, A1 Y. So we end up with plus T minus M1 G is equal to M1 A1, okay? So, which is equal to M1 A. So we end up with T minus M1 G is equal to M1 A, and this is the first equation. Then let's do the same for the, uh, for the mass M2. So let's actually draw the free body diagram for M2. for M2. So in this case, uh, it's gonna be a little bit different because here we have um, an inclined plane, okay? Um, so this is the angle theta here. Uh, let's suppose that this is the block, it's presented by a point, right? Okay, so this point, it has different forces acting on it. So we have first the um, weight M2G. We have the normal force that is exerted by the um, exerted by the um, surface, by the incline on the block. I will just put it like that. So this is N, okay? And we have on the other side the tension because this block is 
pulled on the other side by the uh, cord. So T is acting on the opposite direction. Now we have to choose a system of reference. So the X, Y uh, system. Okay, how is object moving? Look, the, the best thing to do, the best strategy is all the time to consider the direction of motion as uh, your, your system of reference to, to at least be the axis uh, of uh, the system. So since this M2 is moving downward, M2 is moving in this direction, and this is the uh, velocity, uh, the, the vector acceleration. Then it's much wise, in the x-axis in the same direction of motion, along the x-axis, y-axis is the perpendicular. So this would be the y-axis, and this would be the x-axis. And all what we have to do now is to apply the Newton's second law. طبعا في حدا يسالني انه انا ما بدي اخذ الاكس واي بهالطريقه انا بدي اخذها بهالطريقه فور اكزامبل اي ونت تو تيك اكس واي مثل العادي اكس بوينتينج رايت وورد والواي بوينتينج اب وورد طبعا ما في مشكله ابدا انه ناخذ الاكس والواي بهالاتجاهين uh, بس الشيء الوحيد اللي بيختلف انه عم بكون عم صعب حالنا شوي المهمه uh, لانه بصير اكثر من فورس بكون تعملوا لها بروجكشن على الاكس وعلى الواي فالافضل انه على طول ناخذ الدايركشن اوف موشن هي الدايركشن للاكس او للواي وبقى الاكسس الثاني بيكون هو البيربنديكولار عليه. So this is okay for this choice but it's not really advisable. This is not the best one. So let's apply Newton's second law on the mass m2. What we will end up with. So let's start with the first of all the first sum the sum of the forces on the y axis equal to m2 a2y. Uh, okay, what do we have here? So let's actually make the projection of this M1, M2G along the x-axis and along the y-axis. So this is along the x-axis and along the y-axis. It is like that. Okay, should I fit it and then... Okay. So along the y-axis, it is the perpendicular from the vector onto the uh, axis. So how can we de de determine M2G uh, projection, its projection on the X and Y? Have a look. This line, the line of M2G is perpendicular to the horizontal. And the Y axis is perpendicular to the X axis. So since this angle theta is the angle between those two lines, the incline and the horizontal, then if you take any other two axes which are perpendicular to these ones, the angle between them will be the same. So this actually here is nothing else than the angle theta. And therefore its projection along the X axis, it is given by M2G sine theta. And the projection along the Y axis would be nothing else than M2G cosine theta, okay? And now all we have to do is just to apply the relation. So we end up, first of all, in the first uh, n pro, uh, y projection, we end up with plus n minus m2g cosine theta equals to zero. Uh, y zero because actually there is no acceleration along the y axis. So the block m2 is moving only along the x axis. And uh, that's why a2y is equal to zero. There is no acceleration along the y axis. The second equation is sum over x if x is equal to m2 a 2x. So let's do it. We end up with minus t plus m2 g sine theta. That's all. That is equal to m2 times a2. So a 2x is the full uh, acceleration of the object. And since a2 is equal to a, so we can write down minus t plus m2 g sine theta is equal to m2 times a. And so let's draw this in a box. So this is the equation, the third equation. Okay, now what should we do? We need the tension and we need the acceleration. So as you can see, the tension is present in equation number one and equation, so this equation number two, it does not provide any information about t or a. So it's not used, it's not useful for us actually. Uh, so we are going to consider equation number one and equation number three, okay? So if we do one, equation one plus equation three, we end up with the following. So equation one, it has T minus M1G. 
t minus m1g plus uh, from equation number three we have minus t plus m2g sine theta is equal to uh, m1 plus m2a so we end up with m1a plus m2a so we did a summation because we want to get rid of the tension so here we end up with plus t minus t undergone and we end up with finally so minus m1 to so m2g minus sine theta minus m1g is equal to m1 plus m2 times a so finally we end up with a equals m2g sine theta minus m1g divided by m1 plus m2 and so this is the acceleration we are looking for as you can see it's a function of theta so it depends on the angle between the inclined plane and the, and, and the horizontal and then we can deduce immediately the tension so the best is to take the equation number one for the tension because it's simple t is equal to m1a plus g so from equation number one we can write down tension t is equal to m1 a plus g so it's equal to m1 factor um, so here we end up with a is equal to m2 g sine theta minus m1 g and then let's make a common uh, denominator so we end up with plus m1 g plus m2 g divided by m1 plus m2 so I did immediately, I just made the sum in a direct way. And so here we end up with minus M1 plus M1, they cancel out. So we end up with, we can get M2G out uh, in, in factor. So we end up with M1 times M2 times G factor sine theta plus one divided by M1 plus M2. And this is the uh, tension T. So finally we get this value of the tension it's given by uh, m1 times m2 times uh, g factor 1 plus sine theta divided by m1 plus m2 and so this is the equation we are looking for um, so you see it's very easy actually to deal with this kind of problem you just have to define your system what you want to evaluate and then you make the a free body diagram you apply newton's law you select the equations which are relevant for your problem and then you just do the calculation um let's move on but actually before um let's discuss actually what happens in the case uh, theta is equal to 90 degree uh so what happens in this case so have a look if if theta was equal to 90 degrees so it happens in this case is that instead of having this sort of you know this is the angle theta Okay, and here, this is the pulley. Here is the ball, here is the block. So if theta is equal to uh, 90 degree, then what we will end up with is that we will end up with this kind of uh, form. So this is the angle theta, which is equal to 90 degree. The pulley will be here. And so on one side we'll have M1 and on the other side we will have M2. So this is M1 and this is M2. And so in this case, the uh, block M2 will not be any more interacting or in contact with the surface. And so this problem, it simply becomes the output machine, which we have uh, just studied before. Okay, so here we end up with this example, which is the output, this is the output machine. That we have discussed earlier. We continue with another example. Uh, it's example uh, about the hockey puck. So a hockey puck on a frozen pond is given an initial speed of 20 meters per second. If the puck always remains on the ice and slides 115 meters before coming to rest, determine the coefficient of kinetic friction between the puck and the ice. Uh, so you have a puck, it's, you know, it's, it's like a, a hockey puck. Uh, on the ice, 
So it was this 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 puck was it was given initial speed of 20 meters per second. Now they need 20 meters per second to to move. Okay. قالوا لنا إنه إذا إذا بتبقى in contact مع ال eyes, it slides for 115 meters before coming to rest. So بدل ما يمشي 115 متر وبعدين توقف. What we have to do to do is to determine the coefficient of kinetic friction between the puck and the ice. طبعا لو ما كان في friction كانت الباك بتضل ماشيه بنفس الـ بنفس السبيد لانه ما كان في شيء حيوقفها بس طالما مشيت مسافه 115 متر ووقفت معناتها انه كان في فورس عم بتعارض الموشن تبعها اتس ريزيستينج اتس موشن اند اوف كورس وات از ذا فورس ذات ريزيست ذا موشن اوف ان اوبجكت از وي هاف سين ان ذا ليكتشر ات از ذا فريكشن فورس اند اتس كاينتيك فريكشن فورس بيكوز ذا اوبجكت از موفينج سو ديفينتلي وي ار توكينج اباوت كاينتيك Uh, so let's solve the problem. Okay, so we it, it said that the hockey puck was given initial velocity of v0 equals 20 meters per second. Okay, and then uh, the, the given says that if the puck always remains on the ice uh, and slides 115 meters before coming to rest, so we know that it, it has moved a distance d that is equal to 115 meters, and then it comes to rest. So let's call the final equals to zero. So it comes to rest. That what it means uh, it comes to rest. What we have to determine then in this case was what is the coefficient of kinetic friction mu k. If I want to just draw a, a, a figure, this is the, how the hockey puck. This is the object we are talking about. Okay, it was given an initial velocity of v zero. And then it was sliding on the ice. Oh, after it was sliding, it moves only a distance d, and it arrived at this point where v final becomes equal to zero. So v final at this point is equal to zero. The question is, what is mu k? Okay. So how could you determine in general the coefficient of a friction, whether it's a static or even um, kinetic? In both cases, the only variable اللي بتعطيكم اكسس على الميو هي الفورس اوف فريكشن. If we are talking about a friction force, then we are talking about Newton's law. So let's draw a free body diagram of this uh, puck, of this uh, hockey puck. Okay, and then apply Newton's law and then see what do we have for the for the mu k. So let's do it. First of all, our system is, so let's take our system. Uh, let's take, consider, the hockey puck. Okay, to be the system. The system to study. Okay, uh, number two, let's draw a free body diagram on this hockey puck. So if we want to draw a, a, a free body diagram, okay, this is the hockey puck. Okay, what, do, what are the forces acting on this object? So given that the object is moving, so it was given initial velocity and is moving in this direction. So we have uh, on one side, so this is, let's put them in another color. So on one side, we have the mass, right? I mean, this hockey puck, it has, it has a given mass. Let's call it M, G. Uh, it has as well a, a normal force applied by the ice on the uh, puck, let's call it N. And since the object is moving and it is subject to some resistance force, then there should be a friction force that is acting in the opposite direction with respect to the motion. It's very easy. The friction force, the force that opposes the motion. إذا الموشن كانت بهالاتجاه مثل ما حاطين نحن بالخط الأزرق فإذا حكما الفريكشن فورس بتكون بعكس هذا الاتجاه. أوكي؟ okay. Let's apply Newton's second law then. So Newton's second law on the puck. What does it say? Uh, the sum of Fy is equal to MAY. Uh, we know that this, this uh, hockey puck is not moving along the y-axis. 
هو بس عم يمشي على الايس على هيدي على هيدي السيرفيس الهوريزونتال سيرفيس سو الاي واي از ايكوال تو زيرو سو وي اند اب ويز ناو وي هاف تو تشوز ذا ريفرنس سو ليتس تيك اكس اند واي ان ذيس دايركشن سو ذيس از اكس اند ذيس از واي اور سيستم سو وي اند اب ويز بلس ان ماينس ام جي is equal to zero. So n is equal to mg. That's from the equation, that's from the first equation. And then if you apply sum over, sum over uh, fx equals to m a x, we end up with, so along the x axis, all what we have is the friction force. So we end up with minus fk is equal to m times a. a is the uh, acceleration of the hockey puck, uh, and we don't know what it is. Okay, so let's actually replace each term by its value. So fk is nothing else than mu k, right? Right? Fk is minus it's mu k times n, and the normal force is we can get it from the first equation. It's it's mg. So we end up with minus mu k mg is equal to ma. Okay, so from here we can deduce that um, a is equal to minus mu k times g. Fine. So already we have something out of the equations is that mu k is equal to minus a over g. Uh, but we don't know what is a. So we have to look what is a in order to be able to determine this mu k. Okay, how can we determine a? What do we know in this, in this problem uh, else than the, 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 the hockey is uh, moving with a given uh, friction force acting on it, we know that the hockey, it was, you know, it was kind of launched or uh, put on the ice with a given initial velocity V0 equals 20 meters per second. And then it could only uh, move 115 meters because, before to stop. Now, if you know, the initial time or final time with initial Uh, velocity equals 20 meters per second. Final velocity equals zero. ومن خلال هالوقت قدرت تمشي مسافة 115 متر. So is there any kinematic equation that we can apply in here? And can we apply a kinematic equation? Well, let's 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 analyze it a little bit. Let's have a look. The acceleration of the uh, of the hockey puck is constant, right? The acceleration of the puck is equal to Mu k times g uh, in, 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 in magnitude. Mu k is a constant and g is also a constant. So the acceleration of the puck is simply a constant, right? And if it is constant, then we can apply the kinematic equation that we have already derived earlier in the previous chapters. So we can apply the kinematic equations for a particle under constant acceleration. And what is the best? Uh, what is the best uh, equation that could we apply here? Look, look what we have. We have V initial, that is equal to 20. We have V final equals zero. We have the displacement delta X or um, D. Uh, and so we have D equals delta X equals 115 meters. And we are looking for the acceleration and we need A. So what equation can we use? If you just think a little bit about, about it, you will see that actually we have one equation which is given by V final squared minus V zero squared equals 2A times X minus X zero. And this is exactly what we are looking for. So in our case, V final is equal to zero. V zero squared, it's, so it's just 20 squared equals two. Two, a is the unknown that we are looking for, and x minus x zero is simply the distance which is equal to 115 meters. So out of this, we can conclude that the acceleration is given by the value. Uh, so the acceleration is equal to Okay, I don't have the, the, the value of the acceleration, so let, let's put this back into the equation. Uh, okay, it, it, give, it gives some value, I will just make it uh, after, after, after all. So this would be equal to, so okay, that is, 
A is equal to our just calculate the value. And then from this, we can conclude that mu K is equal to minus A over G and it's equal to, so let, let me, I calculate the values. So we did use that the acceleration is equal to minus 1.73 and uh, the um, finally the mu is equal to uh, 0 0.17. So that's the, uh, this is the um, value we are looking for, the value of mu k, which is equal to 0 0.17. Um, so that's it for this problem as well. Um, let's continue with a new problem. Another uh, example, so, Acceleration of two objects connected by a cord in the presence of friction. Uh, we have a new example, a new problem. Uh, it, could, it, it could be similar and it can be seen as similar to the previous one. But in this case, we're going to discuss uh, the case of uh, blocks that are connected, but with the presence of a friction force. And also in this case, we have an external force F that is applied on one of the blocks. So let's read the given. A block of mass M1 on a rough horizontal surface is connected to a ball of mass M2 by a lightweight cord over a lightweight frictionless pulley, as shown in this figure. A force of magnitude F at an angle theta with the horizontal is applied to the block as shown. The coefficient of friction of kinetic friction between the block and the surface is mu k. Determine the magnitude of the acceleration of the two objects. Uh, okay, so we don't know any value of these parameters, so we don't know what is M1, M2, F, uh, but actually when they tell, when, when they say explicitly these kind of variable in the given, like here you have M1, you have M2, when they say that you have a force of magnitude F uh, and at angle theta, uh, when, when they state these parameters, they have shakil bil given, معناتها فيكم تعتبروا انه هول parameters هن known, يعني هو حتى لو ما عطاكم قيمتهم, uh, whole parameters you can take the one uh, can no can no so the law macum will join in the hey mafia mishki I'm at the time I come enjoy in the variable into uh, man I'm going to be given with the mass and acceleration a I don't see a lot the lazy metal will a be meta be able to be able to okay so let's uh, let's uh, solve the problem again Okay, I will draw the, um, the figure. So final example, it's the uh, connected two, two, cord, two objects connected with a cord. So we have here the plane. This is the pulley over there. It's connected to a block on one side and a ball on the other side. So let's just put the, okay, so this is M1 and this is M2. And we have a force F acting on the block M2 and it is pushing the block M2 uh, to the right. And this force F makes an angle theta with the, um, with the horizontal. So let's assume that the uh, objects are moving in this way. So the force F is pulling the block M1. So let's assume that it has uh, an acceleration in this direction. This is the acceleration A1 and A2 uh, would be moving upward in this case. So M2 will be moving um, in this direction. And now what we have to do is that we will have to take the system. So let's take the system of both uh, M1 and M2 separately as we, as we have done earlier. And let's apply Newton's second law on both and then calculate what is the acceleration A. Okay, so let's, let's start. So first of all, Let's consider the free body diagram on free body diagram of the mass M2. Let's start with M2, um, it's easier. So we have, this is M2, it's connected to the um, cable and then you have here the pulley and this is the plane, right? So what are the forces acting on this uh, M2? 
uh, this is very easy. So we have here M2G, there are not plenty, plenty of forces and you have here the tension and the chord T. And of course, here's again, we, um, since the chord is inextensible, so uh, the block M1 and M2, they are moving with the same magnitude uh, of their acceleration. And uh, since the pulley also is frictionless and massless, the tension in the cord is the same on both sides of the pulley. And so therefore the tension acting on both blocks by the uh, cord is the same. Okay, uh, that's number one. Number two, we have, let's, uh, if we said that the block M1 is moving upward with this acceleration A1, and we need to take the reference for us. So this is the Y reference. And let's now just apply the Newton's second law. So Newton's second law on the block M2, it gives the sum of Fy is equal to M2 Ay. Of course, I have taken M, M, uh, the, the, um, I've taken the Y projection because the object is moving upward. So we end up with plus T minus M2G is equal to, oh, this is A2, it's A2. Um, so it's equal to plus M2 times A. So that is the first equation out of this block. Now let's move to the block number uh, one and let's draw the free body diagram for for M1. And also let's put all the forces on it. So uh, I will make uh, things as easy as possible. So let's just draw here this uh, block. This is the block in here. Okay. Uh, what do we have as forces acting on this object? So here is the cord that passes through the pulley. Um, so, and I will also have to mention that we have this force F external. So I will put the force F in black. This is the force F acting on this object. And this is the angle theta making it with the horizontal. Okay, and the object we said that M2 is, M1, pardon, in this case, it's moving rightward, so in this direction, okay? Or maybe let's put it upwards here, maybe. So this is the way this object is moving. It's moving in this direction. A, uh, A1. And this is the block M1. Okay, so first of all, let's take first the uh, our system of reference. So what are the uh, X and Y axis in this case? As we said earlier, the best choice, direction of motion perpendicular axis basically. So let's take this horizontal axis to be the X axis and let's take the Y axis to be this uh, the, the, the axis that is perpendicular basically to X. So this is the Y axis. Okay. Now let's draw all the forces that we have. So on one side, so we have the tension on one side. This is the uh, force exerted by the cord on the object. We have the weight which is along the x along the y axis so this is m1g we have of course the normal force acting uh, on the object by the um, so it's by the plane or the support so this is n of course here you cannot see clearly n and n and, and mg because they are kind of confused and actually this force F is applied on, you know, on the uh, uh, at the edge of the block. But we, sub I mean, we assume that this is simply it's like starting on this point here. This is force F, and so we can just make the projection of this F along the x and the y axis. So we end up with this first component, which is F cosine theta. This is F cosine theta, and its projection along the y axis would be. This is F sine theta, okay? So we have many forces acting on the uh, block M1 in this case. 
And let's actually put the Newton's second law. So Newton's second law on M1. Okay, start with the uh, y-axis. Sum of Fy is equal M1 A1y. Uh, the block is not moving along the y-axis, so this is simply zero. And so we can conclude that we have plus n plus f sine theta minus m1g is equal to zero. This is the first equation that we get out of m1. Then on the other side, we know that the summation of fx, so the external force acting on the object, their projection along the x-axis is given by m1 a1x. And actually the uh, block M1, it has only one acceleration and the full complete vector along the, y, the, the X axis. So this A1, X is nothing else than A. Okay, so we, this actually yields, let's put all the forces on the, on the X axis. We have minus D plus F cosine theta. Okay, now, that is equal to uh, M1 A. Okay, I kept some small white space because actually uh, there is, the, I just want to repeat for you again the given. So the given says that the uh, force, uh, a force of magnitude F at an angle theta with the horizontal is applied to the block as shown in the figure. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the surface is mu K. So when, when, when they say this, that means that there is a friction force between the block and the surface. And so here on top of that, we have to add the friction force to, the, um, to this figure. And the friction force, of course, it, it points to the uh, left because the object is moving to the right. So this is the friction force Fk. And so this is actually what is missing here. So minus T, we have plus F cosine theta minus Fk, which is the friction force is equal to M1 times A. And so this is the second equation out of the Newton's second law for the case of M1. Uh, now what we need to do is to determine the acceleration of the two objects. So we have to combine all three equations together and uh, try to deduce what is uh, A. Okay, so let's do it. Don't forget that we, we, we have here, this is equation number one. Okay, that is equation number two. And this is equation number three. Okay, so let's actually evaluate T and put it in its expression here. In the end, G with T and I would have been able to equation. Here and G with FK and I would have been able to equation. And then I'm going to make a calculation. So let's, let's write this down. First of all, equation number one, that gives us that T is equal to M2 A plus G. Okay, so equation number one, that T in T. equals M2 A plus G, okay? Then uh, we know that actually uh, the, the friction for, for the kinetic friction, we know that Fk is nothing else than mu K times N, okay? And actually we can deduce the N from the equation number two. So this equals mu K times if you look at equation number two, n is nothing else than m1g minus f sine theta. So m1g minus f capital F sine theta. So we have now t and uh, fk. Let's put them together inside the equation three. So we end up with, so let's, if, let's substitute Fk and the tension in equation three, we end up with that gives minus m two a plus g plus f cosine theta minus u k m one g minus F 
sine theta is equal to M1A. So now the only unknown in this case is the uh, acceleration A. So let's put all the terms in, in involving the acceleration A together. So here we have minus M2A on this side, you see? Here we have minus M2A. If we move it to the other side, we'll end up with minus M2G plus F cosine theta So we end up with minus m2 g plus f cosine theta minus um, uk m1 g plus uk times f sine theta is equal to m1 plus m2 times a. And so if you just, uh, you know, put things together, so let's put the F factor together. So let's put this F with the F in here and let's put the other two uh, together. So we end up with F factor cosine theta plus mu K sine theta, okay, uh, minus, uh, minus G factor uh, M2 plus mu K M1 is equal to M1 plus M2 times A. And so all what we need to know is to, we need is to divide M, the, the denominator by the uh, denominator. So we end up with A equals F factor cosine theta plus mu K sine theta minus G M2 plus mu K M1 divided by uh, M1 plus M2. And so this is the acceleration we are looking for. So this is the expression of the acceleration of the two blocks. In the case where we have two blocks connected uh, through a cable passing by a pulley and one of the block is on a surface with friction and uh, under, a constant, uh, under a force F acting on it. Um, so that's it for this, uh, for this problem, for this example. Um, one final note uh, or remark um, is that, as you could see from this equation in here, uh, in the acceleration, that the acceleration of the block uh, can, be, uh, can be either to the right or to the left. That all depends on the sign of the numerator in the equation that we have find for the acceleration. So here, if this F cosine theta plus mu K sine theta is bigger than G M2 uh, plus mu K M1, then A would be positive. And that means that the motion is to the, uh, to the right and vice versa. So that's it for this example and for this uh, list of problems.